Hi, I'm Brian, the Kids Pastor here at Grace, and this is a video for Kids Town Leaders regarding our policies and procedures. And I want to thank you for tuning in, but even more, I want to thank you for being willing to be a leader of children here at Grace. It is a joy to serve with you, and I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in hearts throughout this coming year. While you are watching this video, I would encourage you to have the policy and procedure packet right in front of you. If you do not have one, you can click the link in the comment section on YouTube and bring it up there so you can follow along with us. At the end of the video, I would encourage you strongly to take the quiz uh, regarding the policies that will tell me that you have watched this video, that you are um, making sure that you are in tune to what is going on regarding our policies. And there will also be a prize for you if you can complete the quiz, um, getting um, more right than you get wrong, all right? Our mission statement here in Kids Town is joining parents in pointing kids to Jesus. In everything we do with the kids, we want to make sure that we remember what our mission is, that we are joining parents in this process uh, we are not doing this alone, trying to do something separate from what parents are doing, but we're trying to partner with them, join them, as this is primarily the parent's role. And uh, we are giving parents tools and communicating what the kids are learning with them and uh, trying to be uh, helping them every step of the way. So uh, we're pointing kids to Jesus, but we're doing that right along with parents. I'd like to share some of our Kids Town values with you too. Uh, one of them, the first one, is depending on God in prayer to do what He alone can do. And we realize that uh, we can teach the kids from the Bible, we can point them to Christ, we can share the gospel, but um, if God isn't going to work in their hearts, uh, we can't change that. So that, that's why we pray. Uh, we ask God to change their hearts. We pray for our kids. So let's remember to make that a priority. Um, second, we equip kids by teaching them God's Word faithfully, accurately, and creatively. Let's remember those three things as we teach the kids God's Word. In fact, every time that we get together with the kids, whether it's on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, or a Wednesday, um, it's very important that we open up the Bible and share Scripture with the kids, whatever we're doing, um, to make that a priority and make sure we're faithful in doing that, um, that we're accurate in doing that, and then we do that creatively. We don't just um, read and that's it. Uh, let's make sure that we are teaching them in a creative way, a, an engaging way with the kids. Um, our third value is that we protect children in our care by providing a safe and secure environment. And we're going to be sharing some more things regarding the policies in just a little bit um, that have to do with that, uh, the way that we protect kids. The fourth um, value is showing love and compassion to the kids while still providing structure. So uh, we want to provide a place where the kids are loved, um, where they, they feel like they're, they're coming to a place where, where leaders are going to be there for them, not be against them and just um, being super strict with them. Um, but that doesn't mean we, get, we let them get away with everything, right? Um, so we do still have structure. We have expectations for them. We want them to know that they're loved and we want them to come knowing that and be excited to see their leaders. And then our fifth value is we affirm leaders to use their spiritual gifts as they serve. And this is really important because kids ministry isn't just for kids. Um, obviously, um, we, we want to keep Christ a priority um, and kids are coming. Um, and it's, it's about the kids, but it's not all about the kids. Um, it's about leaders too. And we want for leaders to be affirmed as they serve um, to use their, their God-given gifts and encourage them in that process. So we are develop, developing leaders too with our students and uh, we want to see them um, continue on as they serve in the years to come as they grow closer to Christ and uh, learn some skills as they work with children as well. So those are some of our Kids Town values. So while we're talking about our policies, I do want to share some precautions we are taking regarding COVID-19. Um, the first one is that we are 
asking kids and leaders to wash their hands with soap and water uh, before coming to class. And we also have multiple hand sanitizer pumps throughout the building um, that, that can be used as well, not just at the beginning of class, but throughout as well. We're also asking that if any family member has any symptoms, that the whole family should stay home in order to protect the rest of the kids at church. Um, these kids should not be allowed to check in, so if you notice a child uh, with symptoms and you're concerned, you can address that with um, the person they are checking in with. Um, the third one is that right now we do not have our check-in tablets available. Instead, we are pre-printing name tags and having kids check in outside their classroom or their meeting spot at the beginning. Uh, number four, uh, we are asking for kids to be taken to the restroom to use the restroom before class uh, so they can avoid group restroom breaks. And this helps on Sunday mornings, especially because we have a shortened time frame now and uh, that will just take away from that one hour time slot on Sunday mornings if they have a group restroom break. So we'd like to avoid those. And lastly, we are sanitizing toys and heart services and we're also disinfecting the classrooms between uses each week. Well, you may have already done this, um, but we have a process for all of our Kids Town leaders to go through. It's an application process where they fill out a ministry application. Um, there's a different one for uh, those who are under 16 years old uh, than the adult one. Uh, so they fill that out and then there's also a reference check where we um, ask, ask each person serving to write down some people's names, um, maybe people they've worked with or worked for or volunteered for so they can give us references that we can check up on them. And also there is a background check for um, leaders who are 16 and older and we conduct those periodically. Um, so those, those things need to be done uh, before serving with the kids. Well, in just a moment, we are going to learn from our friend, Alfred. He is going to show us the wrong way to do some things, and uh, let's see if you can point them out. Uh, if you don't know Alfred, he showed up during some of our summer videos, and uh, if you do know him, well, you know that it's going to be quite a privilege to be able to see him again, right? Well, check out this first clip and see if you can spot what Alfred does wrong. Whoa, I've got one minute before I have to teach a lesson. I better get out to class. See you later. All right, did you get it? Alfred was running late. And uh, we are going to ask that all kids ministry leaders arrive 15 minutes early so they can be in place to greet the kids and prepare um, everything that they need uh, before the kids get here. Okay, watch this next clip. Okay kids, so today we learned that we need to obey our parents, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, see y'all later, you're all dismissed. Go find your parents. Go find your parents. Bye bye. Okay, hopefully you know that you can't just let the kids go, but their parents or somebody who is approved to pick up the child is actually going to pick him or her up. All right, so the kids need to be in the leader's care the entire time until the parents pick them up. Other family members are not allowed to pick up the children unless previous arrangements have been made. Well, leader and child identification is very important here and we wanna make sure that every leader is clearly identified with a kid's ministry, a kid's town lanyard. So um, you can learn from whichever ministry that you are involved in, where to pick those up and drop them off at the end of where you're serving. So make sure you are wearing those at all times while serving to identify yourself as an approved kid's town leader. All right, and kids are also required to have name tags and we are pre-printing them right now um, because of COVID and uh, they can pick those up in their classroom or right outside their classroom before they check in. So kids are required to have them so we know that they are checked in. Well right now our Kids Town assistant, Devana, is going to tell us some more important things. Hi, I'm Devana and I'm the Kids Ministry Assistant and I'm just going to continue covering some of the rules that we have. We just covered the name tag, which you have to wear around always, but specifically when you're working with the kids. 
Um, one of the things that we have is the rule of three and it's for everyone's protection. Um, it must be practiced at all times whether you're in the classroom or the hallway. It means there needs to be a, um, a child with two liters or it could be um, two children with one liter. Um, but you need to make sure that this is practiced at all times and the leader that the adult has to be at least um, 16 or older to be to be counted in that. But make sure that you do that. It's for your protection and the children's protection both. And then another thing that we ask is that uh, you um, are careful with physical contact, especially with COVID going on. A lot of kids or parents aren't comfortable with a lot of physical contact, but it should be limited to handshakes, high fives are fine, a brief hug, a brief touch on the shoulder, and this is for everyone's protection also. We have some bright line policies that we've set in place that need to be um, adhered to. Um, you need to make sure that you know what they are because um, we take them very seriously. There's some, um, some things that we don't allow. Um, one's giving piggyback rides, uh, swinging kids around, um, tickling is a no-no, um, wrestling, and then kids four and older should not sit on a leader's lap um, they, or be carried around long term. Um, if they, sometimes a little kid will come and sit that's older than four and they'll want to sit on your lap and then usually if you just kind of set them beside you and just say, hey, you know, sit next to me, that works just as well. Um, Alfred's got uh, something that he's going to show us and I'm sure he's probably going to do it incorrectly. So. Have fun watching that. So that kid was a wee little man, and a wee little man was sitting with him. Climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to. Yeah. Can I use the bathroom? Oh yeah, let's go. You stay here. We'll be right back. Come on. For our restroom use, uh, if a kid's asked to use the restroom, um, ask them if they can wait until class is over. They're supposed to be taken beforehand, but um, a lot of times if you ask them to wait, they'll forget about it. Um, the service is only about an hour, so it's not too long. Um, if uh, We prefer that a, a female take them to the bathroom if possible, a female leader. Um, and then we also have to practice the, re the rule of threes. Um, the leader needs to wait outside the bathroom. Um, you can prop the door open so you can hear, you can usually tell if something goofy is going on in there. Um, the male leaders are not allowed to enter the bathrooms at any time. Um, and then uh, when the parents are checking children into the rooms, especially preschool, make sure you remind them to take their kids to the bathroom before class begins. Okay, stay tuned for another video clip from Alfred. Oh, what a beautiful day. Just to spend some time playing on the playground. You know, I don't think I'm even going to keep my class today. I'll just let them fend for themselves. They'll be, they'll be okay. Well, here I go. See y'all later. I'm going to go play. Alright, so did you see what Alfred did wrong there? Um, he was just going to take his own time away from the kids and uh, let things happen instead of making arrangements. So if you know in advance that you're going to be gone, say you work alternate weeks, maybe you can work it out with the other alternate person uh, to take your spot for that week and then let the person know who's in charge. If you need help finding a sub, um, let that person know as well and they can assist you. Okay, check out another video clip from Alfred. <laughs> okay, who is ready? Who's hungry? Me! You're hungry? Would you like a snack? Yeah. All right, well, I brought some snacks. Mmm, peanuts. Who likes peanuts? Me! All right, well, help yourself, kids. Oh, help yourselves. Here we go. Was it clear what Alfred did wrong here? Only Kidstown approved snacks can be served in Kidstown Ministries. Um, and one of those snacks that is not approved is peanuts or anything with pe that contains peanuts. So let's make sure that we stay away from those because there is a higher percentage of kids who are allergic. And we do have uh, regular snacks that are served, especially in preschool. And uh, if a parent brings in birthday treats or a special snack, make sure that, especially with the little ones, that it's okay for them to eat this treat. So the best way to do that is to save it until the end of class and ask the parent if the child can take it home with them. 
I also want to share a little bit about accidents. Uh, when accidents occur, let's make sure that we let the parents know, uh, especially if it involves um, like throwing up or blood, let the parents know what happened with that accident. If it's an area that needs to be sectioned off, make sure you do that and uh, maybe put some chairs around it and let the custodian on duty know. And you can find the phone number of the custodian on duty on a little green sheet that is on the wall in the classroom. Also, there are first aid kits inside the larger rooms and the kids resource room and in the kitchens where you can find band-aids and gloves. And really those are the only things that can be used uh, for the kids. We can't administer any creams, ointments, or medications. So make sure when there is um, body fluid that we are using gloves to clean up any messes and to put on band-aids. All right, well, let's talk about safety procedures just a little bit. Alfred is going to help us with this next one. Oh boy, it's a fire, everybody! <laughs> All right, did you notice anything that Alfred did wrong? When there is a fire alarm that goes off and that just might happen while you're serving, do not panic. Don't panic, that's not going to help the kids. Um, here are three things to remember. Number one, line the kids up to get them ready to exit. Number two, do a head count. Make sure you know how many kids are in your care. And three, grab the class roster so you know who is with you. And then you're going to exit out the building um, according to the map just inside your classroom door so you can check the map. Also, there is a tornado procedure on the map. So make sure you are familiar with where you would go if security personnel lets you know to take precaution. Following the safety precautions are some general leader expectations. And number one is to guard your daily fellowship with Christ. Keep that a priority. It's so important that the kids see your example of, of being like Christ so they can follow your example as they want to be like Him. Number two, act and speak in a way that reflects Christ. And uh, this is this goes right along with number one. The kids are watching you. You are their example. The kids are looking up to you. So keep that in mind while you're serving. Number three, bring and use your Bible. I want to strongly encourage that. I, I ask the kids to bring their Bibles and to follow along with them. So leaders, let's all do this so we can model that for the kids. And speaking of modeling, number four, um, let's model how we worship. Um, now that can be singing, but it's not only singing. It's also praying and memorizing, encouraging, giving, speaking, listening, using your gifts. There's so many ways that we can worship the Lord, so let's model that to the kids. And lastly, this might seem like a trivial thing, but it's so important to do your best to be on time. When the kids see that we are prepared for them and we are greeting them with our happy smiles, um, it reminds them how much we love them and that we are ready to serve them and point them to Christ. Well, our friend Alfred is going to show us one more video clip and then Anita Stevenson, our early childhood director, is going to share some classroom management tips with us. And then the children of Israel, they exited the, the land of Egypt Excuse me, young lady. Do you have a problem? You're talking. You're talking to your neighbors. That is so distracting. So you, do you know what it means to, to be quiet? Okay, then let's continue. Hi, my name is Anita Stevenson. I'm the Early Childhood Director here at Grace Church. You probably noticed some things that Alfred did that were not the best classroom management practices. So I'm going to review some things that would help you um, as you are working with kids in your classroom. The first thing is to be proactive. If we're proactive and we anticipate situations and we can do things ahead of time, we can really stifle some negative behavior and promote positive behavior. So the first thing to do is to pray. You can always ask God for help in every situation. So pray for yourself, for your attitude, for your hearts, um, for your patience, and then also pray for the kids as they're coming each week, um, that they will be ready and willing to listen and come with um, open hearts to class. 
The second thing is to get to know the kids. I think this is huge. Um, if you ask children their, about their lives, different things throughout the week, and try to remember those and then ask them about it again the following week, that really builds a relationship with them, which builds trust and respect and um, just overall helps their behavior if they can trust you and know that they have a solid relationship with you. Thirdly, um, state your expectations. Children, if they don't know what's expected, then we can't um, assume that they're going to just follow what we are assuming is the correct behavior. So we need to state the expectations and um, make those very well known every single week. Review those. You can make, um, make it fun, little games to review, but state the expectations so that they know ahead of time. Then when there is misbehavior, they can take responsibility for their actions. You need to ask them um, what was expected of them, what they were choosing to do, and what they can do differently so that they are taking responsibility and they're owning up to um, their behavior, but also it's a time to review what those expectations are. Um, when there is also a behavior problem, make sure that you're um, speaking directly to that child. Say their name if you need to, go directly to them, make eye contact, but make them look at you and focus so that you know they're giving you attention and also um, that you are being serious with the directions that you're giving them. Um, make sure that you don't embarrass the children. We don't want to yell at them in front of everybody or um, make fun of them, make light of the situation. Um, be serious and firm, but do it in a manner where they um, are not embarrassed in front of everybody. Um, things that are not allowed, as I'm sure you know, is any physical things such as yanking them or um, spanking. We do not do things like that, hitting, yelling at them. Um, and then don't make threats with no follow-up. They will soon pick up on that and um, will know that nothing is going to happen, there's no consequences, so they'll continue to act in the way they're acting. So make sure that if you give them a direction and tell them what will happen if they continue to make those choices, that you follow up with those. Lastly, make sure you're communicating with parents, not just the negative, but the positive. Parents need to know things are going well. They need to um, hear the good things that their kids are doing. We don't know what home life is like all the time or how these kids are doing in school, so they may be getting negative or positive feedback from other sources also. So make sure that we are telling them when good things happen, but also communicate clearly when there has been a rougher day and um, the child has had to be corrected. If behavior is not improving, please um, feel free to get a parent, get Pastor Brian or another helper to come assist if it gets to that level, if they are continuing to choose to not follow directions. Um, but do make sure that you communicate with parents um, no matter what. So I think that is all. I hope that those techniques help you with classroom management and um, just build a relationship with the kids. I think that is key. That's very important and will help um, class time and lesson time got, go much more smoothly. Thank you for serving. All right, thank you, Anita. And thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Up next is a quick tour of our resource room. If you would like to see what is included and what is available for you to use, if you would like to make use of that room. And then lastly, I would encourage you, strongly encourage you, to take the quiz from this video. Um, not only will it tell me that you watch this video, but you will also get a prize for taking the 10 question quiz. So I'd encourage you to do that quickly by clicking on the link in this YouTube video in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye. We're going to take a tour of the resource room, which we're headed to the kids wing, wing down at the end of the building. Let's go through the door. And we're right. We have a big sign that says resources. And always feel free, and Ada and I, our offices are in here, so you can use us as a resource if you want to. So, come on in. This is our room, this is where we keep all our stuff, which we have a lot of stuff. So if you ever need anything, you can contact us. Usually it's better to do it earlier in the week, um, because I don't usually work on Fridays. But let us know what you need, but I'll give you a quick tour so you know some of our supplies that we have. We have a copy over here. If you need copies, you can always let us know what you need, and we're happy to do that. Um, the paper in here, we have office supplies, pencils, pens, papers, staplers. Down here is a lot of paints. We have more office supplies, rubber bands, all kinds of stuff. 
Um, down here is more paint, glue sticks, tape. Um, up here is we have scraps of paper if you need random pieces of paper or we have material at the top too. This is really miscellaneous cabinet. I'm not even exactly sure what all's in there. There's styrofoam at the top, I know that. Drawer, if you can get it open, we have paint, a dye, some beads, and then down here we have baskets, and then we have extra crayons, and I think there's markers in there too. So, um, in the file cabinets down here, we have a lot of shapes, stickers, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can open it up and a lot of the stuff's labeled, so like stars. So if, there ever, if there's ever anything that you need, we might have it so you can ask or you can come in and check yourself. We have lots of construction paper that you can help yourself to. We have glue guns, bubbles, toilet paper, which might be handy <laughs> if we have another shortage. In here we have flashlights, cards, contact paper, chopsticks, in case you need to eat some not Italian food, Chinese food. Uh, down here we have rope, string, yarn, velcro. That's pretty much what's in there. And then up here we have some fun stuff up here. We have the little buzzers that you use when you play games. Kids like this a lot. We have masks, dice. Um, I think there's some balls up there. And here we have lots of bead stuff, basically. We have googly eyes. A lot of stuff's labeled. I try to keep it labeled so it's easier to see what it is. And then down here we have Q-tips, cotton balls, pom poms. Um, there's Easter stuff in there. We have the pipe cleaner things that you use for crafts. Up here we have um, like ice cube trays, funnels, some kitchen supplies. Um, we have mirrors, tape, which more tape in here. Usually we keep it a little fuller than that. Um, in this drawer we have a lot of miscellaneous. We have balloons, money, fake money, um, confetti, buttons, seashells. Yeah. And down here we have rice, marbles, we have clothes clothespins, kind of a, we have also have the craft sticks, like all three sizes of it. And then our fridge is right here, and water cooler. Uh, we have, for the younger kids, if you need videos, we have a lot of videos that you can use. Feel free to help yourself. And then, that's mostly tissue paper. And this drawer has paper stuff, matches, toothpicks, and then down here is bags, paper bags, um, paper towel tubes, and over here we have some spray bottles, extra coffees up there, that's important, um, a swiffer. Coffee, and then in the fridge we have creamer and we have whipped cream in there, so feel free to help yourselves with that, especially as it gets cold. And then this drawer has a lot of first aid. Um, we have tools in here, but you might need this if you need a band-aid or something and you can't find it in the room. And then down here is more paper goods. Um, yeah, sometimes the 
red cups, I mean, people use them for crafts and stuff, I would hesitate drinking from them because sometimes they get put back in there and they've been used. The coffee cups are good, but I would hesitate using the red ones, but they're there for you to use. So that's just a quick tour. If you ever need anything, let us know and we will try to see if we have it. Thanks. Yeah, that looks much better. I wonder if he'll know who did it. <laughs> what should we name him? We can name him Fred, although I think that's Brian's dad's name, isn't it? I think it might be, so that might not work. Micro. Yeah. <laughs> we can name Mike. There you go. That's Mike. perfect. Love it. Call him Mike. Isn't he look cute? <laughs>